Hello, long time no videos. I want to make a video about some questions or a couple of videos about some questions that I have been asked and one of the first questions that people ask me when um, they ask what you do or I don't know um, is like why do you live in a yurt? So there are people who hear about my lifestyle and the nomad town and the concept of resilience hubs and a very common question is like why do you live in a euro there are other questions like how do you do this and that and uh, what do you do with this and that but i think the why question is pretty interesting to start with because i think that's where we all have a common ground um so first of all for those of you who are not familiar with yurts yurts are um, nomadic structures so this is the yurt there uh this is um a group TP kind of tent and oh, there's a visitor dog here also and yeah so the the yurt um, is quite a small shelter in comparison to the average house so the European average for houses is around 42 square meters per person of um, floor space and with my yurt which is um, about for three people in my way of thinking and also in my experience we have been now in the last winter living in this yurt quite often with three people, like two adults and a child. Uh, and this yurt has 25 square meters. And the reason why I live in a yurt is mainly survival related. So I personally feel that survival is a lot more than, than about knowing how to survive in the woods or something. Uh, it's not a hobby or anything. It really is very down to earth wanting to stay alive, accepting the responsibility of showing a lifestyle to my offspring that can safely be copied. And I have now been trying for something over eight years to make life in a so-called normal house more sustainable. So making more sustainable took a lot of effort, a lot of energy, also a lot of money. and. I realized that the level of sustainability that is required cannot be reached with a house that is on grid, right? Uh, reasons why, just for example, if I start with the, uh, the sewage system, right? That's already on grid. Like even if you have your own water from a well, even if you have your own electricity, as long as you have a sewage system that you have to be connected to in many places, you cannot reach sufficient levels of sustainability. You're uh, the, the whole sewage system is not sustainable. It needs a huge amount of um, money, resources to maintain and to run, right? Um, uh, also, just the energy consumption of this system. Uh, another part is, for example, the heating. The house that I used to live in, it had uh, electricity and wood heating. So the electricity, even though we had green electricity, it would come from a quite complex grid with lots of complex infrastructure. So uh, to transport the electricity, to produce the electricity and, or let's say to turn the energy into electric form. And these networks also require fossil fuels or fossil resources. Let's think about uh, the windmill, for example, to make green electricity or solar panels, you need fossil resources and they are then turned into something that does not go back to nature into a shape or form that is usable by other organisms. So when I think about uh, the yurt here, my heating source is wood. That's my only energy source um, for, for heating, for cooking, for hot water. Um, and this wood comes from this area here. So in that sense, it is CO2 neutral if it has not been transported um, by a vehicle, for example, or a road network on a road network that again requires fossil resources. That's also one of the reasons why in the moment I'm making wood with a handsaw, not with a chainsaw, but with a handsaw, because I understand that fossil free lifestyle is necessary to actually make yeah, life on this planet possible, right? Uh, otherwise, we eat the planet and that's the same as cutting off the branch on what we are sitting. So 
in comparison to this um, house that I used to live in, where I had probably some 30 square meter of floor space per person, it was a 100 plus square meter house. Um, now I have a lot less space to heat and also my yurt doesn't require energy while I'm not using it. Also, there's only one room, right? Even though um, if, if I'm in the kitchen, in a normal house, let's say, I'm in the kitchen, you still have the bedroom heated. I have the same, but it's all the same room. So when I'm using it, everything is heated that I'm using and I'm everywhere at the same time. Also, the yurt has um, the advantage that, it, as I said, it does not need electricity or, or any energy source while I'm not there. Um, it's It can easily go to minus 30 if I'm not here in the winter everything can freeze inside the yurt and everything that should not freeze it's down in the fridge that I have like I have this 240 liter storage space under the floor so it's an underground storage earth fridge this is also where I store my food now in the summer um, in the winter I store it a lot outside also and um, that's very convenient again doesn't need any electricity I don't really need a freezer because I can dry food or smoke food um, or yeah, learn about fermenting food. So yeah, a couple of reasons for the yurt and then uh, there's a mobile component to it. So it gives me a lot of freedom. Um, nobody knows tomorrow. I don't know um, for what reason I might need to move to a different location or maybe there's a better location for the nomad town. So we might have to move or we might want to move. And then with the yurt, I can just pack up my home and take it with me in the moment like with the yurt I well I have to go many times for bicycle trader or I transport it by car with um, like um, biogas fuel but that's yeah so it's a transition I'm not really happy with that part yet also it's quite a big shelter for transporting without a horse or so and I believe that we have to go to bicycle speed and bicycle distances um, and the yurt is not really suitable for that. Um, well, it can be split up, it can be transported many times. Um, I could have a different f set of frames somewhere else and only transport the canvas. So, but that's something to still figure out, at least in the moment, I'm believing that for the next years I will be in this location. Um, so the yurt is something, it can be transported, it can move with me. And another bonus is I understand the yurt. I can look at it, I, I don't have to guess uh, is there mold in the walls or not I can look at it and see it I can see if something is going to break before it breaks and these are things inside uh, like I, I know about sewing like I'm quite good with the sewing machine so I can fix things by myself I don't need um, a network of experts or, or hardware stores to maintain the yurt um, yeah um, and then another thing is I know that yurts work. So we have a lot more experience with nomadic um, shelters than we have experience with permanent shelters, especially more experience with shelters built of natural materials than shelters built from synthetic materials. Today we have materials uh, like houses and shelters that are put together from, you know, often foam. So just glued together using materials and energy sources that um, yeah, leave, leave toxic waste, problematic waste. So with the yurt, I don't have any of this. And, um, or maybe a little bit, there's some polyester in the, in the fabric. Um, but um, yeah, there it's, a, you know, it's, it's compromises, it's learning, uh, it is just trying. So I, when I was looking for a lifestyle that could possibly work or is more likely to work, I started with shelter, um, like as one of the six survival priorities that I try to cover in a way that I understand it um, and that it doesn't impact others um, more than, I don't know, more than what is okay. So anything else about the yurt? Yeah, it's just a great place. <laughs> it's like, it's a really great place. Um, now we have end of May in the eastern uh, in the place that humans call eastern finland i've been living here since last august so i've had my first winter in the yurt uh, had temperatures down to minus 24 degrees celsius and yeah i was warm it was like 
uh, really easy to be warm and be comfortable and the round shape is really beautiful the this like the crown the skylight is beautiful uh, it, it's just a so beautiful and such a good energy place to be in and um yeah pretty much the first time in my life i'm also feeling homesick whenever i'm not here um yeah well in childhood times when i felt home at my parents place but uh ever since then i never felt really anywhere as much home as i do now and yeah that's partly because it's an understandable shelter and the feeling that it's something that my kids could um, copy safely could just take over and if not just pack it up put it in a trailer put it in a storage somewhere uh, it doesn't cost you anything because it's paid off that's also something like when i think of the shelters that we usually live in the average in finland is 26 percent of the of the income that means two hours on an eight hour work day uh, goes to pay mortgages or or uh, rent and um, this year it's paid right it's it's um, well I bought this year and from a yurt maker in Finland you might notice that the roof is a little bit steeper right that's to um, to to be better dealing with snow loads and more um, more rain also so the typical Mongolian yurt would be a bit flatter and I know that it's possible also to build shelters totally from natural materials or recycled materials without any costs people are doing this people have been doing this and I find that very inspiring I just had money at hand back then and I felt really like I'm in a, in a hurry and I think we are in a hurry we really are in a hurry we need to try things out I had no idea I've never been in a yurt before um, before I was in my own yurt and I feel that we have to try these kind of adventures outside of our comfort zone um, just because, because we see that continuing to live in our suicide bubble I call it the suicide bubble is not an option we cannot use more than one planet it's impossible and in the moment we do so for the sake of life in all its diversity for the sake of the human species even and many other species like we really need to change our ways dramatically and fast and yeah shelter from the six of our priorities i find shelter was a um a plausible one to start with so please post questions in the comments if you have questions i try to answer them and also please feel free to subscribe i hope to bring valuable content and i think that's it I'm trying to make a video every tuesday from now on so now i said it now i have to continue with that uh, everyone have a good time take care of each other and yourself and thank you thank you thank you bye bye